Welcome to the Parenting with Impact podcast with your hosts, Elaine Taylor Klaus and Diane Dempster, co creators of ImpactParents.com, an online community, award winning blog, and service organization helping parents all over the world to raise complex kids become capable, independent adults. Hi, everyone. Elaine and Diane here. And we know that you want your complex kids to grow up to be happy and independent. And yet you're not always sure how or when to help with that. In this podcast, we'll encourage you to collaborate with all kinds of complex kids and support them in navigating life and learning. And we'll interview leading experts from around the world, as well as parents in our own community, talking about how training for parents actually helps these complex kids. We'll talk about the issues we hear parents struggling with all the time and how a coach approach can support and empower your amazing young people. We won't tell you what to do. We're going to help you figure out how. So let's move on to the next conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to another conversation in the Parenting with Impact podcast. Diane and I are here today with our friend and colleague, Sonali Vangchusiri. Did I get that right? You got it. Excellent. Live from Bangkok. So we are doing a a cross-global conversation today. And we've been working on scheduling this one for a while. So I'm super psyched to have you here, Sonali. And thanks for coordinating your schedule to make it work with ours. We're, we're thrilled to be in conversation with you. Thank you for having me. I love collaborating with both of you and I love the work that you do and what you bring to the world. So I'm honored and excited to be here. Oh, uh, lovely. Feeling is mutual. So Diane, you want to kick us off? Yeah. So Sonali, tell us a little bit about the backstory. How did you start doing what you do in the world? The work that I do is on needs, sensitivity, and regulation. And it started because of my own journey. I was that parent. I've always said, okay, I'm a highly sensitive parent and I have three highly sensitive kids. And at the beginning of my parenting journey, I was struggling in my relationship with my kids because I was trying all the parenting methodologies that were out there and they just weren't working in my home the way that experts said they should. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try more playtime, be more playful. And it worked for the week. And I'm going to try more <laughs> one-on-one time. Right? And, and I couldn't sustain that because I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, I couldn't, it would overwhelm me. And I tried listening and listening to emotions and it was taking up hours of every single day. And again, I couldn't sustain it. And so I was draining. not miss the draining part of that. Yeah, right? exhausting. <laughs> draining. And I, I felt drained, defeat, exhaustion, overwhelm. I felt alone, isolated. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And it wasn't until I was like, until I realized that what I was doing was ping ponging with needs for my child. I was like, oh, I need to do this because the expert says to do this. And it just didn't work. And I was like, oh, I was ping ponging back and forth. I was on this emotional roller coaster with my kids where I was like, okay, they need this, they need this, they need this. And I put their needs above mine. And so for those who are listening, I've got one hand above another. Right. And then, and I call this the yellow zone, where you feel that defeat, depletion, exhaustion. And then, as is expected, eventually you reach a breaking point where you're like, I can't take it anymore. You might snap. I I might have snapped. I might have yelled. I might have just been like, okay, fine, whatever. And had a moment where I had an experience like dysregulated anger, frustration, Mm -hmm. and that didn't feel good. Immediately after that, I'd feel guilt. So then guess what I would do? I'd be like, okay, let me put their needs above mine again. Okay. And so this is the ping pong back and forth. And that was destabilizing. So I realized I'm like, that's not working for us. What I needed to do was bring their needs and my needs together side by side Hmm. like this. So I've got my two hands side by side and in ways that worked for me, that that genuinely worked for me and my kids and my family, given our set of needs. And when I could do that in a way, that way, I was able to stabilize my relationship with my kids and I was able to enjoy my relationship with my kids and my relationship with myself. And so that, and it was this realization that, What I want parents to know most is that to shift the conversation from you need to do this. And oftentimes we hear that as parents, we listen to these podcasts or we listen to different things. Oh, you need to do this so that your child does this to what is it that you need? Yes. And finding your own way. Because one of the things that I believe is that we all have the same set of core needs to be seen, to be heard, to be understood, to be 
appreciated, to be approved of, to be acknowledged, to be valued, validated, to know we're important, that we matter. Yeah. It's just that some of us have non-traditional ways to get those needs met mm-hmm. and finding those ways. Yeah. Wow, there's so so much in what you've just shared already. I, I don't know about you, Diane. I could go about 10 different directions. I was just thinking the same sort of thing. I'm like, okay, which way do we go? <laughs> yeah, there's so many things to talk about. I want to I want to acknowledge and and affirm and share that our experience was very much like your experience, which is we tried to do what the experts told us to do. And all it did was make you feel worse <laughs> because yeah. now you're doing what the experts tell you to do and it doesn't work. Now what? And when yeah. you have complex neuro spicy issues yourself, like I do, or you do, or when your kids do, it, the, the the rules are different, right? The game is a different game we're playing. And so we need to give ourselves permission. And that's what I, the other thing I hear in you yes. a lot is this huge permission to stop giving, giving, and giving yourself away and start giving yourself the grace that you would give other people and give your kids. Oh, I got chills as you said that. And yes, exactly that. And I think for me, it just hit it hit me in parenting. That was when it hit me when I wrote, reached my breaking point because I'm a complex person. I'm a deeply feeling person. I support deeply feeling parents of deeply feeling kids. Oftentimes we don't realize that we're deeply feeling highly sensitive too until we start this journey. And I'm also, I also happen to be a person who is legally blind and I have albinism. And so I could not dismiss those needs But I tried so hard. I tried to pretend like I could see. And I tried to pretend like I could do those things. I remember having this moment. I was in the park with one of my kids and they were about two. And they pointed up and they're like, bird. And I was like, yes, that's a bird. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, what are you doing, Sonali? You have no idea if that is a a bird bird. or a squirrel. (laughs) Or if they're pointing, like what they are pointing at. I'm like, you're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to connect. Yeah. Yes. But it was not my way to connect. But it was like, oh, mirror back to your child. I'm like, no, that didn't work for me because, and now the way I define connection is sharing our truth with ourselves and with our kids. And so it was changing that question to, as they got older, oh, describe what, or, oh, you see a bird. And now it's like over um, the holiday, we were just talking about the holiday um, when I'm, I was sitting outside at my mom's home, enjoying this cool, crisp weather. And my son came out and he's mom, do you see a wasp out here? And I'm like, I don't see a wasp, but I also don't see. <laughs> <laughs> so you take well, that with a great insult. Yeah, so, me, kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what's coming up for me and, and in, in the so many different directions we could go with this is the fact that sometimes it feels inherently, if I try to meet my child's needs, and I try to be meet my own needs that there's a, that creates a, an un, unresolvable conflict. In fact, I was just talking to a mom yesterday who's, I'm using gentle parenting and it works with this kid. I'm using uh, playful parenting and it works with this kid, but it doesn't work with the other one. And it's like this, and it doesn't work for me because I'm trying to do too many things at once. Yeah. yeah. So talk a little bit about what that was for you. Cause you, I love the visual of, I was balancing them and I brought them together. Those of you who are on the podcast can't see what we're doing with our hands, but we're doing this thing <laughs> where we're like, they're far apart and we're bringing them together. It's this sort of yeah. balancing the needs. So talk a little bit about what that looks like feels. I think a lot of times a belief that we have is when we have a complex child or we're complex, like let's, when we have a complex child that it needs to be complex to parent them. And one of the yeah. things that I believe is it does not need to be complex to parent them. Really? Like another thing that we believe is that, oh, if we have a deeply feel, like what I actually believe is that we might have a child that is more sensitive, more energetic, more deeply feeling, but that doesn't mean that they need more from us. One of the things that I like to say is more is not better. Instead of more, go deep. And so instead of more connection, I support parents in finding deep connection. And yeah. how can you find deep connection in a stable, secure, solid way? And that can be in seconds. So I actually had a member in my community, The Cove, who completed mid-year. And, and she sent me a message at, at the beginning of the new year. She actually sent it on New Year's Day on January 1st. And she's like, Sonali, I remember last year in the first Cove call in 2023, you said, what is your vision? Where do you want to be when you're sitting at December 31st, 2023? And she's, I wanted to remind you that what I had said was I wanted to work on my fear. I wanted fear to be a safe thing. And she's, I took the things that you said 
And I wanted you to know that I'm still using them and I'm still applying them. She's what I did is anytime I felt fear, because what I support parents doing is finding a way to embody and step into embodiment in just a couple of seconds. She's anytime I noticed fear was coming up. I even just practiced it daily. She's I would go, ooh, and like and try it with me. Would it. you guys try it with me right ah, now? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. Ooh. <laughs> and, and notice how do you feel, Elaine and Diane, just after doing that? <sighs> no, there's a, a layer of energy that got released. Yeah. Yeah. And that wasn't two hours. That wasn't nope. 15 minutes. That was under six seconds. Yeah. And so she's you have like, to give yourself permission to look or be ridiculous to do that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a yeah. little bit hard, if I'm honest, sitting here as we're recording this and all that other stuff. Yeah. So, it, I so think there's that judgment because piece. I don't see, so I'm not concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so she did that. And she's like, got to Halloween, which is a holiday that normally just spooks her out. And she's by that time, I was able to buy these pajamas for a whole family. And they had, they were like, they looked like mummies and they had eyeballs on them. And she's like, I was super excited. And then we put them on at home. And I realized when we got in the dark that the eyeballs glowed. And she's, and I was like, oh my gosh, should I return these? And she's, no, I just did the ooh thing again. And we had this playtime and uh, connect, like we, we wrestled and we had a good time, like playing in the dark together as a family. Mm. And she's in that. And it's just, that was just so empowering. And then we got to the new year and she's, you know what I did to celebrate New Year's Eve? I wore those pajamas. Uh, I love because, it. Because I could do that. And so it wasn't her spending hours and hours working through that emotion. It was just a couple of seconds, but in a stable, secure, solid way. And the, that's how connection that is deep can be simple. It's about activating the felt sense of connection inside of us. And so. you're talking about stable and safe. And, yes. and the thread I want to pull is that you were talking about fear, but it's really about being stable and safe in any emotional situation. Whether yes. you've got a really energetic kid, if you've got a really frustrated kid, if you're really dysregulated and, and overwhelmed or whatever else. It's this sort of, how do you not be like, oh, I have to push the, I got to push this emotion away. This is bad. I can't, or I have to stop this. I have yes. to stop this. Yes. To, yes. How do I feel safe in the midst of this big emotion or this overwhelming situation or whatever it is? Is that talk a little bit more about that? Yes, that is exactly what it is. And it's about how do I feel safe with this emotion? And actually the needs that I mentioned at the beginning, seen, heard, understood, appreciated, approved, acknowledged, aligned with, that's a sense of belonging, that we're valued, validated, that we matter. Those are what I call the core needs. And it's actually this process I call the Schwab process, because one of the things that I realized was that there's more to creating safety. There's more to creating that sense of solidity than just seeing, hearing, and understanding. And this is actually from my experiences as a person with a disability. I'm like, there's this acceptance that comes, but it can also lead, I felt very pitied as a child. Mm, okay. And and I was like, oh, there's something here. And so while people accepted me, I, d I didn't feel that sense of receiving. And so the A's and the V's, approval. Like you can understand someone and still not approve of them. Does that make yes, sense? Absolutely. And And so bringing the approval so the approval, acknowledgement, agreeing with not the thing that somebody's saying, but the energy of it, alignment, that sense of belonging, that you're not alone in what you're going through, valued, validated, those same things, the A's and the V's are what our kids oftentimes need. That's often missing when you feel like they've got that unfillable cup. It's often what we're needing to be the needs that we need met when we're feeling that way. And it's often what we want to do when we're meeting our emotions, whatever they are, is we want to bring those A's and the V's, the energy of receiving to them. Think of your emotions like, like your children. Mm -hmm. And when your children walk into the room, how do you greet them? Do you greet them like, oh God, you again? Or you're like, there you are, <laughs> and your eyes light up. <laughs> I love that. We need, to, we, need to, we need to take a break. And I, I, I don't know what direction we want to go when we come back, but I've got some ideas. Excellent. Hi, it's Elaine. And if you like this podcast, you'll love our coach approach. Whether you're a parent looking for support or a professional supporting families, we invite you to download a free guide with 12 key coaching tools at impactparents.com slash gift.
You can begin using a coach approach to help kids become more independent or improve all of your conversations at work and at home. That's impactparents.com slash gift. Welcome back, everybody. We are in a deep, powerful, impassioned, fabulous conversation with Sonali Bangjasiri. And we were just talking about the A's and the V's and people's core needs. And as I was hearing you, listening to you, I was hearing this the words empowerment and embodiment and the integration of the two. Diane, mm-hmm. you were thinking about what direction you wanted to go from here. What came up for you? Well, what's coming up for me is just how you're talking about being able to be okay with emotion and mm-hmm. what we're ultimately talking about. And so now I know what you often will work with families around is parents who have kids who have big emotions, strong willed, or parents are in really overwhelming situations and we do the same sort of thing. Let's get a little practical and out of the theoretical of, yeah, it, it's great to say I want to be safe and, and present with emotions. And it's not always that easy because a kid's had a mom the other day whose kid was calling her a really not OK name. And sometimes that sort of stuff happens and it's hard to be with. So let's go that direction. Yeah. Like when our child is calling us a name and we're having a feeling come up with us with uh, coming up with us. Yeah. Let's start there because. If we're, and, and oftentimes what I see is it's meeting our kids and our, and our needs, it, it happens in parallel in that moment. So yes. let's say, our ch- because as much as we'd like to be like, okay, I'm going to pause and freeze and go take care of myself for 15 minutes and then I'll be back. Oftentimes with the strong will sensitive kids are going to follow you into the bathroom. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'd be waiting right outside the door, right? Yep. And we don't yep. know what to do. And so there are like... What I like to focus on is that really simple heart-led action. And so there's part of me that wants to say, oh, here's how you handle this situation. And there's part of me that says that this is so unique to the dynamic at play because what are the needs that are unmet for the mom and for the child at the same time? And so that's where I would go into that conversation. If I were coaching them, I'd go into be like, okay, what were the words that your child was saying? Let's look at those words. And it is what I like to do is acknowledge both your child and you at the moment. So instead of trying to say, hey, don't you speak to me that way, that this is, goes back to that conflict of needs, right? Yes. Because they need something and you need something at the same time. And let's not pretend that either one of us doesn't have needs in that moment. We do. Um, so I want to respond and I'm not sure what you need. Could we pause for a minute and pull back? Going nonverbal because with deeply feel, so that's one idea. So I want to respond. We're acknowledging them or there's something going on here and I'm not sure what it is. So I'm holding both of the things. I'm not mm-hmm. stepping into the energy of I need to fix this. It's yeah. I, instead of fixing it, acknowledge it. Yeah. And that's one of the things like when you want to fix it, go in and acknowledge it instead. And, and that can be the way to resolve the need instead of trying to solution find and put a band-aid on it. Going nonverbal. So with an, even with an older child, but a younger child as well, if you take out a piece of paper, and you guys can join me on this one too if you'd like. So just take a blank piece of paper and just scribble on the paper. And you could do this in front of a child. And you just scribble. And after a couple seconds, We've moved enough energy where we feel better. Our child looks at us and they're like, what's mom doing? She's lost it, but it's created in, and it's created a bit enough of a pause. A space, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And we've moved some energy. And so if you actually do that when you're in that moment, here my lines are pretty smooth. I'm feeling pretty regulated right now with you guys. You're yeah. fun to talk what to. What does that mean? Don't psychoanalyze me, but no. <laughs> yeah. Or you can, if you have that child who is crying and behind the door and won't come out and you're like, and you don't know what to do, you, as the mom here, I'm just going to draw this. This is a really bad drawing. I've actually put the arms in the wrong spot. That's okay. There's forgiveness here. Okay. Non-judgment. Yeah. Forget there's not judgment here. Just validation. <laughs> and I, while you're drawing, I don't want to lose what you just said, which is that the one one what we're looking at is a nonverbal response. What you started with was saying another way to do it is to acknowledge the experience, which is something we yeah. talk about a lot. I was talking to a client yesterday exactly about this exact issue of 
first, here's what I see is going on. I, here's what I see you're struggling with. I can tell that you are, whatever the language is, because that notion is they're afraid they're not going to get their needs met. Yes. And so what we're trying to do is to acknowledge them in a way to say, I've got you and I'm your gonna needs are gonna be met and my needs are gonna be met. Yes, because we're also afraid our needs aren't gonna get met. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's why we can't dismiss either one. So exactly. Um, well, and then just so, so Sonali, before you go there, because I'm going back to the scribbling for just a second, because that moving the energy is so important. Elaine, mm -hmm. sometimes even before the step you just mentioned. Yeah. I may not be able to acknowledge what's going on until I get some of the noise out of my body. Out of my, yeah. Yes. And okay, so go back to your other, your second picture, Sonali. Okay, I will. And that's what the ooh does. That's what the drawing does. You can also, just, just so parents have another one, another great one is just take that piece of paper. And if you rip, rip it, it up, ooh, ooh, I like that one. Yeah. So if you want to do it with me, and that will move energy in I'm just all this recycling in my desk. If I do, I do not have I enough don't. paper around me to do this without <laughs> ripping up something important. So I'm going to. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I'll rip it up for you. That's what I'll do with all my extra notepads from now on. I'll just use it for burning some energy. For ripping up. There you go. And you just move. And I've worked with parents who've been on cold calls and they're like, I just feel so stuck. And I'm like, go grab a piece of paper. Let's all do yeah. this together. And yeah. we rip up that piece of paper. And they're like, I didn't know that was what was between me and feeling free. And it's Isn't like, that amazing? Yeah. Wow. That is the embodiment. That is the, because you're, if you're letting yourself rip up a piece of paper, what we're doing is we finally found safe expression for our emotions. Yeah, That's what we're looking for. And simple expression. We're not saying we have to go for a two hour walk. We know we don't have the time for that. We've got deeply feeling kids, <laughs> uh, but this we can do in a couple seconds. And, well, so and it's not just about safe, but a lot of times our kids, our reactivity is what baits our kids into that's what the, where the hot mess starts. They do something, mm -hmm. we react, they react, we're spiraling up. And you're in this sequence response. Spiral a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And so inside the inside my community, we call it the forward together emotional workout because we've got all these different things that we can do in just like a couple seconds. Seconds. Yeah. Seconds. And I want to see the drawing. Yes. The drawing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. Mom loves, and I chose Sarah as the name. Sarah's got a puddle of she's tears crying. on the She's crying, and there's a heart. And so this is that the A's and the V's. If you're drawing a picture of what's going on, you're sending them that you're acknowledging, you're approving, you're saying this is important. I drew a picture of it. That's how important this is. Mm. Your feelings matter. And it's a nonverbal way to communicate because oftentimes words won't go through at that moment and so that drawing and maybe when they slide under the door they rip it up guess what we just talked about how healthy it is to rip up something <laughs> so don't, don't so take it personally healthy. and suddenly decide that's because you're a terrible mom no exactly you didn't do it wrong in fact you've just nailed it because yeah. you gave them a safe way to express what you can do is just draw another picture and say hey go for it you can rip this one up too give them that permission approval that it was in that it matters that they were doing, they were paying up. So that's a couple of different ways you can do this in seconds. And the acknowledgement of both parts, one of the sentence structures that I like to use is I want, I care. Let's say you have that child that asks for 52 and a half hugs before bed. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and there's that part of you that genuinely wants to give 52 and a half hugs because we care about deep connection. We care about right. our child being safe and secure. And so I talk about this as louder and quieter parts within us. We also want to say goodnight because the underlying need there is to support our child in having rest and yes. us in having. Yes. So these two needs look, when we look at hug versus closed door, those needs look like we're in conflict. When we look at the underlying core needs, safety, deep connection, and rest, those needs are not in conflict. So we can say something like, ooh, so we start with the louder part in our child, because that's usually the quieter part in us by that point when we're on the 51st hug. Ooh, I want to keep giving hugs because they just feel so good to have your two arms around me. And I also want to let your body rest so that we have mm. a great day tomorrow. Let's do this. Let's do one big squishy hug. Would you put those two arms around me one more time, please? And then we hug you get like that in the morning. 
it's called I Want I Care. And I've had a parent say, just by trying that, by bringing that to her bedtime routine, 50% of the bedtime battles dissipated. Dissipated. Because of the acknowledgement. That, and that's what I was looking at is there's so much in there. And the biggest piece of it that I hear is remembering to communicate to our kids that we want to be in relationship with them, yes. that we want to be connected to them, that we want that I would love to stay here all night and snuggle with you and cuddle with you too. I want you. Yes. And I also want to take care of you. Yes. And, that, and we're and also we're both communicating that to ourselves. Exactly. We're beautiful. To our kids and ourselves at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So much in this. And we've got to start wrapping ourselves up. So, Nolly, so of all the things we talked about <laughs> or we didn't talk about, how do we begin to wrap this conversation up? Is Wait, there something? What? B- before we do okay, that, yeah, can yeah. we ask, let's just take a quick moment. So, Nolly, how can people find out more about you? You can find me at forwardtogetherparenting.com. I also have a Facebook group called Raising Your Strong Child, and I post in there and share quick tips. And so those are two great ways to reach me. And we'll have all of this on the show notes, everybody. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Now, Diane, wrap us up. (laughs) So there's two ways we can go. We can talk about the one thing you want to talk about that we haven't yet talked about, or we can take something we've already talked about and put an exclamation mark next to it to make sure people don't forget it. Which direction do you want to go? Let's take something that we've talked about and put an exclamation mark. And it's really that parenting complex kids doesn't need to be complex. Sometimes we think it does. Sometimes we think we need to do more. And remembering that more is not better. Instead of more, go with deep connection. Yeah. The most powerful thing we can do as parents is keep it simple. Yes. And yet we feel like we it just we get drawn in or there's so many other factors that come into play. But parenting complex kids doesn't need to be complex. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. As we wrap, we always like to ask our guests if you have a favorite quote or motto that you want to share with our communities. And and when we asked you before the conversation today, it was a pleasure to watch Sonali pause and think about it. We could watch her process and then it was like, you got it. So I'm curious first <laughs> what your quote is and second, whether it's the same one now that it was before you started. <laughs> it is, and it's something that I don't know where it's from. But, but it's something that I've held with me for many years and it's at the core and it, I think it's at the core of what parents are experiencing in the parenting journey. Sometimes we think we need to be heavy and serious so that we can figure this thing out. And mm-hmm. it's that there are no unhappy, there are no happy endings to unhappy journey. Say it again. There are no, un- there are no happy endings to unhappy journeys. Enjoy wow. like this process of understanding your needs and your yeah. child's needs. And parenting, allow yourself to experiment and enjoy the ride and some and and throw things like throw spaghetti at the wall and figure out, oh, does it stick or not stick? And it doesn't need to be it instead of it being a failure, it's just feedback. And to giving ourselves that permission where when we can rip up a piece of paper, we're not taking ourselves as seriously. No, yeah. we're allowing ourselves to we're giving ourselves that permission to have some fun while we parent. Beautiful. Well, and what I want to go back to your quote is if our parents want happy endings. And what you're saying is that be happy now. Don't wait Enjoy to the, the end. Yeah. Find a way yeah. to be happy in the moment now so that you're not just waiting for something magically to happen so that you can be happy. And Right. Don't make your happiness conditional on getting to the end. You so, deserve so- Sonali, I got to tell you, when Diane and I first started Impact back in 2011, our tagline used to be enjoy the ride. <gasps> and we did a focus group. Uh And what we discovered was so many parents had a hard time even believing it was possible. It's really interesting you say that because even as I said that, I'm like, oh, there's going to be this group of parents. And I know that we're going to be like, no, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. I don't even know how to do that. And 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 it's not about how. (laughs) Right. Well, and so keep listening to the podcast, keep getting some help and support for yourself. And this stuff isn't, it's not complicated, but it's not easy because we're fighting human nature. We're fighting our own internal battles, our own emotions. We've got kids who are who we see as struggling. All of these pieces equate to something that feels heavy 
And so part of this work is how do I figure out how to make it feel a little bit lighter so that I can stay in the game longer on the journey. And enjoy the ride. And enjoy the ride. How can I make it safe so that I can? It's possible, right? Yeah. 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 So what did you want to say to those people who were thinking, like, Sonali, I heard you were. Yeah. And I do, because I remember sitting in that spot. And if, when that thought comes, I can't, what I would like to bring to that is, of course, you're thinking that thought. Yeah. And probably because you've experienced so much pressure to do it right. And of course, you're having that thought. And that's only because you care so deeply exactly. about supporting your child. Yeah. Beautiful. Hmm. What a beautiful note to to close the conversation for now. I know there are more conversations ahead for all of us in our future because we love to play with you and collaborate with you. (laughs) So Sonali, thank you for being here and thank you for the bright light you bring to to the world in your world and your community and for sharing it with ours. We appreciate Hmm. you. Thank you so much for having me here, Elaine and Dan. And for those listening, I appreciate you sharing your time. It is, an, like I said, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. And this was a lot of fun. Thanks for having, the, thanks for making it fun and light and easy in the podcast, embodying all those things here. Mm. Love that. Thank you. And thank you all that are listening. Thank you for being here. And before we wrap up, just take a minute for yourself and turn some of the information and the ideas and the things we've been throwing around in this conversation into a a nugget, an aha, or maybe even something you want to do differently when you move forward. So take a minute and reflect for yourself. What are you taking away from this conversation? What's your awareness, your insight, or what action do you want to take? And thank you for everything you're doing for yourself and for your kids. At the end of the day, you make the difference. Take care, everybody. See you on the next one. You've been listening to the Parenting with Impact podcast with Elaine and Diane. For more information on the Impact Parents community or to join Sanity School for Parents, please visit impactparents.com. If you like what you've heard, please share this podcast with friends who need similar guidance and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the essentials of Elaine and Diane's coach approach to parenting, download a free tip sheet at impactparents.com slash podcast. Behavior therapy training for parents is actually recommended as a first-line treatment for complex kids. For information about Sanity School, our training program for parents or teachers, which has helped thousands of families around the globe, visit impactparents.com slash sanity school.